In the last video, I'd showed this clip of working on the wood roof sections and mentioned that I had lost all the other footage. Well, I found some more of it. Maybe half, so here it is. After getting most of the radial trusses in, we started putting in cross bracing. Here I'm simply focusing on keeping that wood separated from the dirt. The wood is all treated and it's really concrete that's up against the dirt anyway, but I also wanted to seal up any little potential gaps in the concrete with some hydraulic cement. Then we started adding plywood. For the arch segment, I had used thin plywood and I just applied several layers with glue in between. Adding some more cross bracing. and then more plywood. Every single piece of plywood had to be cut to fit this puzzle, so when I get a chance to place first and then trim to fit, I take it. And then at the end, I can easily come back and trim to match that curve. The sawdust makes the roof slippery, and we don't want it under the paper anyway, so Michael is sweeping it all off. Once the plywood is on, we want to wrap it to protect it from just rough weather as soon as possible. It may look like the sun is set, but this is probably just around 6 p.m. So the lights come out. We got it all wrapped that evening, but not before the camera battery died. The next time I went out, I shifted focus to the entry side of the house, basically rebuilding the same sort of structure over again. I used an identical laminated beam on this side of the house as well. Its job is to transfer the weight from the wood arch down to the steel columns. At this point, I'm building out the segmented arch so I have something to attach the plywood to. This is very easy. I have to just a little math to get the blocks right, and then they're easily attached. The front arch of the assembly is a little more complicated because it has to be freestanding, so I'm starting with a piece of treated plywood cut to some arch segments. These become the middle layer, and really, really just keep everything the right shape. Next, I cut some 2x8 blocks from some treated boards at specific angles and lengths, and I arrange them to form the arch. If I did my math right and cut everything at the exact right angles and lengths, these should fit the plywood arch perfectly. I glued and screwed them all together. Then I glued and screwed the plywood to the top of that. Then I made a bunch more blocks and screwed and glued them together. And finally, I glued and screwed that arch to the assembly. <laughs> The video of that freestanding arch being put into place, and a few other steps, is still lost, but it was very heavy and it took a lot of huffing and puffing to get it properly aligned. Then you can see, under that snow, that we put in stringers, etc. to form the roof. I really like the way the snow is setting in this pick, but we really can't leave it that way. And here's how the other roof is doing under the snow. Back again after the snow melted a bit, and Sherry and I are putting in the last of the trusses. At this point, we're into early January. Then we skip ahead a few days, past the plywood bit that you saw in the other roof section, and you can see the underlayment is protecting the lower roof, and we've come back to add plywood to the top part. That paper was meant for templating, but we ended up just measuring instead. I changed the approach for this section and decided not to try to get that smooth curve from thin plywood. I just ended up using thicker plywood, and then I cut to fit the segments. There will be more layers of insulation and plywood and roofing material added after this layer, so no real need to put in so much effort for that perfect curvature now. 
There's no time to finish this whole section before we have to go home, so I'm switching to applying underlayment to protect the wood that we do have in place. We almost always finish in the dark. Back on a weekend day and my parents are in town, probably mostly helping with the concrete floor prep that will be shown in the next video, but I need to sort out this last section of roof before we get out another snowstorm. So clamping and screwing to curve the plywood a bit, but it's still a bit faceted, especially for the narrower boards. This last board was the trickiest. It was tough to get in there with the tools, tough to get the curve, etc. We can't fit clamps in here, so we use that pry bar to curve the board in tight with the wood frame, and then we use screws to lock it in. Uh, waterproofing this groove is going to be fun. Time to add the storm guard wrap. This is really just to keep it dry for this winter. We'll have other layers above this. Bonus footage of the chimney box going in. The box is designed to be installed in a wood roof, so I sort of built the right cross section inside my concrete tunnel to match what it was designed for. All this wood I'm using against concrete is treated. It gives us nice attachment points as well as a bit of a thermal break between the steel box and the concrete. Then we drop in the steel box. It's like a transition between the inside stove pipe and the outside chimney pipe. And it gives some space around it to provide a thermal break and prevent any problems. Then this first section of chimney pipe clicks in and then the flashing goes over the top of that. This internal flashing is just to close the top of that cylinder and to keep the attic insulation off the slightly hot chimney. Next comes the actual flashing that keeps the rain out. Because I'm building in super slow mode, I don't expect to properly finish the chimney this year, so this is just temporary flashing, or at least it's not the final flashing. I'll probably just leave it in there, but I don't want to disturb my nice ledges because I plan to add stone to that later. So I cut it to make it fit, and then I do what I can to make it watertight. It doesn't look pretty and it doesn't need to. It just needs to shed most of the water for a year or so. I got a bit crazy with the scraps of flashing, just trying to cover the holes. But that Henry's roof sealant stuff is so good that it probably made up for my janky job. Anyway, it's been more than a year now and we've had no leaks, so job done well enough. The next video will cover preparing for the concrete floor pour, lots of fun with rebar, and insulation and radiant tubes, etc. And we are probably overdue for an up-to-date walkthrough. So I'll get to those as soon as I can. Talk to you later.